It's always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot woot. Hi everyone, this is Julie from Patchworks, and I am so excited that you're joining us for another Must Sew TV. Tonight, we are going to be celebrating with our Aurifil Color Builders, and we're going to be talking about fusible applique. And that is why I have the gorgeous Zootropolis quilt behind me. So this Zootropolis quilt, you may have seen in the store, and we are still running the block of the month, have a few of these still available, not block of the month, sampler block, and this quilt is going to be with us only for about another six weeks. So if you needed to see it, make sure to come on in. And if you had wanted to get started, if you were on the fence about starting with this program, I would say you should hop on and get those blocks while we're still making them. We have more of the books coming in stock shortly. All right, so let's talk about our thread. How does that sound? <laughs> I'm so excited this year. So this year, our color builders are featuring these gorgeous flowers. Oh, they're so pretty. And so it's the Flora Color Builder of the Month, and we're going back to 50 weight thread. So that's the orange spools here. And we are focusing on variegated colors. So there's one solid and two variegated. The colors that we're featuring this month are 2800, 4060, and 4670. Throughout this year, our club members will be collecting 24 gorgeous variegated threads and 12 solids. Now these solids, I believe, are different from all the other solids that we've had before. Tammy's posting a link on our feed here so that you can see or you, you have the link to be able to join. And we have our program available both in uh, annual pay or you can sign up to pay month by month. Every month you'll get three gorgeous spools of thread. You'll get a thread pack and you will get a pattern. And this pattern is to make an applique block. All of these blocks, I'm going to have Frank show us a photo here. So there is a uh, the quilt that we're going to be making has, this is the block of the month that we're working on, but there is a picture that has all 12 blocks that we will be making. So this is a illustrated sample here and you can see in the upper left quadrant there that first block and that is the frangipani blossom which we are making today. We're going to be talking during this program about different types of applique and today we are going to be starting with fusible. The fabric that I have included in your pack is flowers or for the petals, a little bit of shading. We have some leaves and here we use the gorgeous ombre fabric here. So we go from light to medium, medium to dark. So this particular fabric in the different range of colors that we have is wonderful for applique and because you can just get a strip of fabric and be able to choose all the different pieces. So you really have, oh goodness, at a minimum three, I would suggest four to five different shades here which is just really awesome. And we've also included the flower centers. So it's a little bit different from the format that we did before. We want to make sure to include fabrics to be able to make that applique center. 
your backgrounds will be on your own and we'll be using a variety of different backgrounds for a scrappy setting, okay? Throughout this program, you're also going to be seeing um, a spattering of batik projects. Today, we are just focusing on this first block, so we are not introducing any other projects. How many of you have done any sort of fusible applique before? That's where you take um, the fusible web adhesive, put it to the back side of fabric, and you ad adhere it, cut it out, put it on other fabric. Have any of you done it? It's like making fabric stickers. I know that a lot of people are intimidated by applique and they say, oh no, it's the A word. But really, it's just a different skill set. And what we're trying to do in this class is to kind of take the fear out of it, okay? So there's a variety of different products that are available for fusible web adhesive. And they are, the ones that we carry in the store are Wonder Under, Steamaseam Light, and Steamaseam. My favorite happens to be the Steamaseam Light, and I'm going to show you why. So it comes on a roll. We're going to be getting it in a sheet form as well. Uh, that's going to be coming soon. And the sheet form would be something that you can actually either just hand draw things or you could run it through your printer. But if you have a printer, you want to make sure that it's an inkjet printer because that laser jet printer, well, that's heat. And heat is kind of like an iron. And well, you don't want to fuse, <laughs> you don't want to fuse your laser jet. Ask me how I know. All right, so we have it in a variety of sizes. And this one here happens to be the steam seam, which is a little bit higher tack. And in the project that we're building today, we're going to want the light tack. Um, what's the difference between the two? Well, uh, steam seam that is the traditional, that might be for a craft project that you aren't necessarily looking to stitch down heavily or maybe doesn't have a lot of layers. And the light has a little bit less adhesive. And so it works really great if you're going to be working with something that you're layering a lot of. The reason why I like this product and either the light or the regular over a Wonder Under or something else, they're all fabulous and all do its job, but this is couched between two pieces of release paper and it has a slight tack to it before you uh, apply any heat. So if I pull it apart and I'm going to hold it close to my microphone so you can hear it. Okay, can you hear my finger stick to it? So it's really nice because you're able to position things before you seal them down. And so that's really, really nice when you're working in something compound like what we're going to be working with today. Okay, so the steam seam we have comes, we carry it in the 12, the 18, and the 24. And I need to hold it up for you so that you can see it. And so it's called steam seam 2, but all of the steam seams right now are between those two pieces of paper. There had been a product years ago where it was just on one side, and so that's why it says two. My favorite is this 18 inch, and it is 828 a yard. All right, so when you're using this, there's two sides, and Frank, let's look overhead on this. So there is a side here, I don't know if you can see this ever so slight, there's a grid printed on one side, and there's not a grid on the other side, okay? You want to always trace on the side with the grid. Why? I don't know. That's just what the instruction said. So we're going to go with it. All right. So we are going to do this. So what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to get into the guts of how you trace. All right. Why not? So I'm going to pull over. Now this is an old fashioned light box. We're going to be talking about light boxes, and actually we can kind of talk about it right now. Um, so this is a light box, and what's a light box? It's something that when you turn it on, da, 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 there's a light. 
And then <laughs> the reason why you would do this, okay, the reason why is that when you're tracing something, and I know that it's not necessarily coming through great, okay, if we're tracing something, when you put the piece of paper on top, you can see it. Uh, if I have it just on my flat table here, it's a little bit more difficult. Now, a lot of times at home, I'm a little lazy and I just trace without taking the light box over, but you can see how much easier your life is when you do this. So this light box is probably, oh goodness, 25 years old, okay? So the good thing is, as I'm showing you these new models that are available, is that they last a really, really long time, okay? So Frank has some photos here before we actually go into it. So if you are looking to have an, a light box, this particular one, just so you know, this is a 12 by 18 size. So this one here, is this the number one, Frank? Yeah. Okay, so Frank's um, going to share this one here. So this is called the wafer one. It's really thin and it's kind of like a tablet. It is nine by 12 and a half so that it would be large enough just for a piece of paper. And that regularly pr priced is 175. We are offering special order deals for you. And so if you let us know and we would be able to pre and you prepay, we would be able to offer you some really amazing deals. So regularly 175, this one we will sell to you at 124.99. This is price matching on that giant A word website. So we are offering you the best prices and you won't have to pay for shipping. Okay, next one that we wanna show you, which would be comparable in size to the one that I'm using is the wafer two and that's 12 and a half by 18, 17. The one that I'm using is 12 by 18. That regularly priced is $275. Our super special price will be $189.99. And then the last one I have to share with you is the Wafer 3, and that's a Gigondo one. Once again, really, really nice and thin. It is 18 by 24, so that is pretty giant and massive. If you really get into a lot of applique, you might want that one that big. I know that Tammy has one that size at home, and she says, oh, you've got to have it that size. Um, and so that is regularly priced $375, and our price to you would be $275.99. So, of course, that is the biggest savings. Um, and so I would recommend either the Wafer 2 or Wafer 3 if you were looking at doing this. Really great pricing. Let us know um, sooner than better. These pricing will be available, I'm just going to say, on special order through February 15th, okay? Um, beyond that, I don't know what the, I don't know what, um, how pricing may change. The other thing too is that if you're watching from afar, this is a freight intense item, so I would have to charge you actual freight if you are ordering from afar. Okay, this would not apply to any free shipping promotion that we'd have, but you'd get really, really great shipping, or really great savings on the price of the product. All right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna look at, we're gonna go back overhead to look at what our pattern shares with us. So if you are a member of the program, and this is a members only thing, but what we're gonna do is the fundamentals we're talking about are applicable to all applique. So you get a picture, you get some um, materials and supplies required. You get layouts, layouts, more layouts, colored layout. This is not a placement sheet. This is just a suggested layout. This is not to scale, but these are to scale. So this is your template. So there's two versions of the template. At first I was scared with four pages. So this is the templates, they do not include seam allowance, which we don't need for feasible web applique. In a future month, we'll talk about a different method where you might want seam allowances. And this is printed straight up. Now, the last two pages are printed in reverse. Now you can see the top is cut off here. This one and this one are actually the same, but this one is reverse. So, if I laid them on top of each other, they would match. When we are working with fusible web adhesive, we always want to work with things in reverse. OK? 
Okay. So we are interested in the two pages that are in reverse. Now remember, Orofil is an Italian company, so some of this stuff here may, oh, that isn't Italian, that's just the formal name of the plant, ha, huh. <laughs> you know, all the exciting things. Okay, so we are going to be tracing this. Now, I'm not going to trace all of this here painstakingly, but I wanna share with you um, some of the best practices for tracing. So we're gonna turn our light box back on. Okay, and I just have a small piece here. If you're working with this and it's couched between two pages, pages what you wanna make sure is that it's smooth and flat, okay? So you might have to just smooth out any ripples that would happen when it rolls, okay? You can use washi tape or painter's tape to hold things down if you need to. And what we're going to be doing is that we are tracing them. When you're tracing them, my favorite tool is to use a marker that will not, um, that is a permanent marker, acid-free, that will not um, smear on your hand, okay? So using a pencil or an ink pen could help, could end up as you're working your hand, leaves a mark, and then you can get whatever's on your hand, on your fabric, and that's bad. So I like this. This is the Identa pen that we carry here in the store. And Frank, how much is an Identa pen? Like three fifty or something like that? Something like that. It's under five dollars. This is great not only for working on your um, project here, but this is also for marking laundry. So if you ever need to mark laundry for somebody, you have the thick and the thin. This is not new, new, new. This is one that I've used for a while. So when you're working, I happen to be right-handed, and something I learned early on is that as you are tracing, you want to take advantage of the upward, of your natural curve of your hand. So go with me, okay, so at home, I want you to do this, okay? So even if you're not doing it, do you see this? How, like you're working this rainbow, you wanna do this upward arc. So rather than trying to go backwards or doing crazy things like this, you always wanna make sure that you're positioning like that. All right, so there we go. And so we're gonna just rotate things. Now you can always correct when you are, when you are cutting. And here we have things that are kind of intricate. Okay, I'm just trying to rotate here. Oh goodness, doing this live, I'm doing this really crazy. Okay. All right, so we'd, so you'd mark it, go like that. Oh goodness. It looks like I haven't even like graduated kindergarten. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you want to trace. Now you also need to mark. Okay, so that's 5B. I'm going to do one more. And if Yolanda's watching, I know she's laughing at me. So here we go. Tammy is at the keyboard if anybody has any questions of what we're doing. And so you're just gonna go around. Now, as you're tracing, what's really important is to make sure that there's a little bit of space between. Now, I really like how they've spaced these because there's space to cut in between. So I love that. So we're gonna trace and mark. Does that make sense? And wouldn't you know, dun, 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 I have gone ahead and done it all. Oh my goodness. And see, this is still my handwriting. So see, I know how to trace. And what I want to show you here, okay, so this here, this is page one. And so I added then to it that B, because the B there, the number is the number of the unit and B indicates which fabric. And so B equals petals. On this second sheet, there is one other B. So what I did is I transferred that over here, just as, and I add on, I wouldn't write add on there, but I did this one here. So as I'm putting this on my fabric, I have this all together. 
so that I can just do it in one sheet. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, we have a question. Um, why would they use painter's tape for it? You would use painter's tape for taping it down to the surface so that you would it so that it wouldn't shift on you as you're trying to trace it. And the painter's tape is nice because it's not permanent and you'll be able to re release without ruining your fabric. Um, and then long arm, do other things need long arm over your applique? Oh, absolutely you can long arm over your applique. And I know that there are several schools of thought that uh, talk about only fussy quilting around it, but uh, e especially even in the sample behind us of the Zootropolis, we have a sample in store of how it's quilted on top, and there's ways to disguise the quilting so that you see the beautiful imaging. Okay, so for this page two here, I want to point out that there's a special part on this particular sheet where it says, for the 1A, it says times three. So that means we need to trace it three times. And there are several different fabrics here. So what I did afterwards, so I traced all three and then I drew a line in between. So A is the flower center, these E, medium green leaves. I drew a little line, the B, the D is the dark leaf and the C is a gray. So you can see so this way here as I am going to separate them before I put them on fabric, we just can separate them out. Now wouldn't you look here, look at these amazing scissors that I have. So these amazing scissors that I'm using, these are the Karen K. Buckley perfect scissors, perfect. This is the seven and a half, which is absolutely amazing. It's the large size, $31.95. It has nice cushion handles, serrated blade, and pointy, pointy, pointy ends. You want to have the proper tool for the job here. So if you've watched some previous uh, different applique demonstrations that I've done, well, I use all kinds of tools available, but ever since I've switched to using the proper tool, for the job, it works out super well. So these are available both in long and shorter blades, but the points really work well, especially with the fine details that we'll be working with. All right, so we have th we have four, one, one, two, three, four, five. We have five, five, I can count, five different pieces that we are going to be working with. All right, so how are you going to get the paper onto your fabric? Any guesses? We are going to apply it. And I have a piece of fabric right here. Okay, so here's a piece of fabric that you would get in your pack. And here is my petals, okay? What we do is that we're going to peel off the back side. Dun, dun, dun. If you're having an issue getting it to come back and forth, so you peel off the side that has no writing on it. And of course, I can't do it because we're live, right? Yes, yeah, so what is the question? Yes, we'll be using these same scissors to cut through after it's all attached. And then Doug is wondering, instead of painting by hand, could it be used painter and painter paper, or is that too thick? Then iron on the fabric for cutting. Okay, so we have, so there's a couple different things. So you could, so the freezer paper, I use in a different method. 
you would be able to run either if you cut these to the proper size of paper, you'd be able to run these through an inkjet printer. Remember, inkjet, 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 inkjet. Freezer paper would also be inkjet, inkjet, inkjet. Once again, ask me how I know. Um, and that would be perfect. And these are sized to go through a printer. So that is a true statement. They're in theory, you would be able to use freezer paper. We're not going to talk about that today, okay? But yes, you could absolutely use technology if you have an inkjet printer at home. And what's the second question? Okay. So I have an iron here set. Now, steam a seam, you don't necessarily have to use steam. So I would be doing this on the back side of the fabric, okay? So with it being a batik, sometimes it's really hard to tell the right and wrong side of the fabric, uh, but you are fusing this to the back side of the fabric, okay, to make your fabric sticker. And what we're doing is that we are using the least amount of heat possible to adhere it to the fabric, okay? The reason being, we're going to be fusing this several different times, and we want to make sure that we don't burn the glue off. If you burn the glue, it is possible to burn it off. So you want to make sure it sticks without being over sticky, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have it fused, and then I'm not going to fuse all the other ones, but I'm just going to show you how we're going to use especially the green. Okay, so for the gray, we would go ahead and put that there for the stars. If you wanted to, you could fussy which part of the yellow you want to feature, or you could just go for it and position it on. For the green, what we're doing is that we would take, now see the medium, you can see it doesn't quite fit. So we would need to trim it. Okay, so this would, for the medium, we could come, oops, sorry, we need to see it a little bit farther this way. Here and there. And Frank, could I have you take the light box off the front of the table? Thank you so much. Okay, so I'd position like here. And then the dark, I could come over here. You could go as light as you wanted, depending on how you wanted to use it, okay? So that's how you'd position all of these. After you have them all fused down, you get to go back to kindergarten. Yay! So we are going to cut some out. Once again, we're not going to torch you by doing all of it. And I would not necessarily work with the whole sheet all at once. I might go and just take a section off, okay? And so you can see I'm using these same scissors, okay? And so what I had learned when I was cutting in for the applique here is to move your fabric and not your scissors, okay? And that seems to work pretty well. If you had wanted to smooth out your curves, you can do that with the scissor. So you try to take as smooth and long of cuts as possible. If you had needed to get in to do a detail, we'll come in after and I'll show you a trick here, taking advantage of our nice long tips. Right. So if you needed to get in here really close, I'm holding this far away from me so it's a little bit harder, me with my bifocals here, okay? So the key to this is staying organized, all right? So does that make sense how we cut it? I'm going to assume that yes. And the really nice thing about these rulers, after you're done, it has a really nice sheath to keep it protected but also make sure that you are safe.
So let me let's read the package. In my mind, this is ambidextrous. However, let's see what they say. Keeps fabric from slipping, helps prevent frayed edges, cuts up to eight layers easily. So, okay, let me see here. These are even sized handles. I am not a left-handed person, so I'm not sure if this looks right or not. But my hand fits in it evenly. I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah, I don't know either. So that, but I believe that it, this is what it is, and I know when we were on the website, there was not a specific left-handed available, I do think this would work either way from my lay, uninformed <laughs> position. Okay. All right. So uh, you want to make sure that you stay organized. So we have here, we had cut that out and we had it with a little binder clip here. You could also use your wonder clips to stay organized. Wonder clips are available in a variety of sizes, but these are really, really handy, not only for holding your binding, but for keeping you organized like this. So if you have, depending on what you have in your sewing room available for you. Okay, so that is the basics of cutting out, so tracing and cutting out. Now what we're going to do is we are going to build our flower. Okay, does it sound like a good plan that we can go back and build our flower? So when we're building our flower, the really fun thing about this, fun thing, is that as we peel these off, we literally have fabric stickers. So that's just really fun. So you're peeling the side off that has the writing on it, so you don't want to peel it off before you're ready to use it, right? Because otherwise you're going to forget what pieces, which especially with the intricate pieces like we have here with the flower. All right. So the next tool that I like to use that helps me build this is an applique pressing sheet. So we have more applique pressing sheets on order and it's a Teflon sheet. Okay. That's available in a variety of sizes, but the Teflon sheet uh, is multi-purpose. So number one, it protects your ironing board from getting adhesive on it. And the other thing that you can use it for is that you can use it to build your applique. So that's what we're going to do today. So we are going to bring out our, actually we don't have to bring out a light box. If you had a, um, a positioning table or positioning paper. So some patterns have positioning papers like this actually is a positioning paper that you could place this on top of and you could build your stickers on top of each other according to this size. In this pattern, because it's larger than a sheet of paper, a positioning paper would look like this. However, this is not large enough. I tried it and it just didn't work because my pieces were too big. So at first I thought that I cut my pieces out too big, but um, this is just a visual guide of how things look. So if this were to size, I could build with a light box on top of here. However, um, we're just going to use this next to it as a guide. Does that make sense? All right, so let's look overhead and what we're going to do is that we are going to, so this is a very well loved ironing, uh, pressing, applique pressing sheet here. So we are going to pull out in our pattern. I really like their, their illustration of, or instruction of how to put this together. Okay, so. In the figure one, it tells us on how to layer things to go together. So we are actually, we're not going to layer all of them here, but I'm just going to show you in general how these go together. Okay. So it is, I need, 
keeping them in order here, we're going to need 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And this is where your artistic mind gets to come to light. Okay, so we are going to start with number 12. So we're going to peel this off, number 12. We're going to look at how it kind of fits on that chart. We'll put this on right here. Da -da -da. Okay, then we're going to take 13. We're going to peel it off. We're going to see how this fine. Okay. Da -da -da. 14. And this is art, so if yours is a little different than mine, that is just fine. Fifteen. See, it works together really nice. And as we're building this, I'm going to show you, so I'm leaving a little gap here as it shows right there, and we'll see how this 16 comes to play. Okay, so let's say I didn't want as big of a gap here. I can pick this up and I can move it ever so slightly. Oh, yeah, I like that better. Okay, so what you're going to do now after you have your little unit set together, you can take your iron and quick hit it with a little bit of heat. Not too much because once again, we want to preserve the adhesive for later in the process because we are going to be heating this several times. So now with this particular Blossom 1, wait for it to cool just a titch. And after it's cooled just a titch, we can pull this back and just like magic, you probably would want to let it cool just a little bit. Now you have a fabric sticker. Ha! Look at that. So there is, so you're making blossom one, blossom two, then you're putting blossom two on top of blossom one. They really have given you nice, nice order of operation, but that is the concept that you build these different things, okay? So now that you have built different things, what does it look like all together? Dun da da dun, dun da da dun, dun da da dun. Here we go. This is my bloom. So we have the three different ones with this guy peeking out the end, and here are my leaves. And you can see with the leaves that there is just a little bit of shading you may want to have your medium green be a little bit lighter in the green so that you can see a little bit more distinct shading. So now that we have this, you can say, okay, I want to put it on my base. So I'm going to be using an Essex linen. Uh, I chose to use this beige one. I should probably know what color it is, but it's a brown one. You could use... Um, they used Essex linen in the first one, or in the one that I showed you as well, okay? So Essex linen, linen is a nice woven. It is can be used in quilting. It actually came to market used for um, apparel, but it's really interesting in quilting. It has these natural nubs in here. And so the nubbed side, so this is the back side, the nubbed side is the good side. So it has these really interesting characteristics. So I'm just going to hit it with the iron quick. And I probably, I'm going to just cut off a square. I probably should have prepared a square first. So you want to start with a larger square than what you're going to finish up with. So the size of block that you are going to use, um, the size of block that you're going to use is a, end up with is a 12 and a half. And you'd probably use your rotary cutter and make this, but this is larger, so we're getting about an 18 inch square here. And what you want to do 
before you adhere your flower is that we want to find the center, okay? So we're just going to press it in half and in half. Give it a little finger crease. If you had wanted to, you could hit it with a little iron, but I don't like to because I don't want to have to iron it out, okay? If you want to draw lines, you could, but I prefer just this easy method so that you can um, have some nice reference lines. Now we're going to take our fabric sticker off. Oh, wish me luck. All right, so. I ironed the steam seam to the wrong side of the fabric. That is correct. When you're using batiks, just be consistent with the same fabric of what you're using if you have a difficult time telling the right and wrong side of a fabric. Um, but in a print, yeah, ask me how I know. So, so here we're just going to very carefully take these edges off here to release it. Now, in this particular piece, you're putting green, and we'll look at it from the back side, green under really light white, okay? There are ways that you can color block if you think that it's going to be an issue. We'll talk about what that means in a second. So, you know, just like in real... Sometimes when you watch these videos, it looks like things go super, super quick on TV. But you can see this is more of a um, little bit more tedious is a good word. It can be very enjoyable, but you just need to have a little bit of patience. Okay, so I have my gorgeous flower here, and I'm going to line it up on the center line here. Why not? And see, this is where it's nice to be able to. So is this how I want it to be? Let's look at what our picture should be. Yeah, that looks pretty good. What do you think? But see, if you use this as your reference, you would be really sad because you'd say, wait, this is giant. It doesn't fit. So if you wanted to scoot it over just a titch, you could. Keeping the stem straight on your vertical, okay. Let's see, we have that light tack, okay. Look at that, what do you think? Okay, so you can see that there's dark underneath here, but in this, um, from above, there really doesn't look like there's drastic shading. And the light is quite severe here. The cool thing is that you see how there's a little bit of a green peekaboo of the leaf because that's how it naturally would appear. So that's pretty awesome. And then we're ready to seal it in. So we are going to take it and seal it down. Now in next month, we're going to be talking about how you would stitch this, okay? Stitch something like this. Um, if you're a member, I will be sharing videos with you that will share several different methods, be it the raw edge, thread painting, or um, something like we have on the Zootropolis quilt that's more of a zigzag or satin stitch, okay? You can see here how there's lots and lots of layers, so you would want to make sure that you're using a thinner fusible adhesive, because if you have something that's too thick, it will, um, well, it will be super thick. I have a couple tools here that I want to share with you. So when you, while, because I know that there's going to be some of you that want to go ahead and play and stitch right away. So first thing, before you're going to be stitching down, you do want to make sure that you are going to be using a stabilizer behind. So my favorite stabilizer is the Totally Stable. We carry that here. It's by the yard and it's kind of like freezer paper. So it has that waxy side on this side and a smooth rough edge on this side. You would put the waxy side on the wrong side of the fabric 
and iron it on, okay, and then stitch. Now the reason why you would use a stabilizer, it's so that when you're stitching, this won't pucker up because you can see that this here is thicker than that and you just want to make sure that with your differences of fabric and all of the thread that you'll be adding that you won't uh, compromise the stability of your base fabric. So that is the purpose is to add a temporary piece behind to help provide stability. Okay, so totally stable. There's many, many, many different kinds of stabilizers, but the totally stable, which is by Selkie, it's $229 a yard, which is very affordable. That is the one that we've been using for quilting here for many years. One other thing that I want to note for you is that as you're embellishing it, I do recommend that you keep it oversized as you're going to be stitching and embellishing before you trim it down. Um, when it goes into a quilt, this block needs to be cut to 12 and a half inches. However, when you stitch it and embellish, it shrinks it in. So you want to make sure that you do all of your shrinking before you cut it to size. Does that make sense? Whew, all this information. Okay, what kind of needle do I want to use to sew? Well, I would use a non-stick needle. So our not super non-stick, which is by Schmetz, is available in three sizes, the 70, 10, 80, 12, and 90, 14. We are using the 50 weight, and so my preference is that 70, 10. You could also use the 80, 12. Wouldn't you know though, we do have, we ordered some more of the Schmetz samplers, which is available for just $24.99, and that has in it all the different great things, including, does it have non-sticks? It doesn't have non-sticks. I lied. Well, this is super cool regardless. So you want to have samplers so you can try out all the different needles. But you want the, <laughs> you want the super non-sticks. So, you know, the super non-sticks, I don't have a multi-sized right now. They're available in three different sizes. They are $6.99 each, and they are super awesome because, well, they don't stick as, uh, when you're going through all of this adhesive. Okay, sound good? All right. Thread-wise, it will be awesome to play with your different threads. And if you're looking for a different look, um, we do offer the Orophil monofilament threads, which is available in the clear and the smoke. If you're using monofilament thread, you want to make sure that you're using cotton in the bobbin, okay? You'll be very, very sad and frustrated if you try to use monofilament in the top and the bottom, okay? Why is there clear and smoke? Well, you use clear on light colored threads or fabrics and smoke on dark colored fabrics. So on my flower, I would use the clear on my petals and I would use the smoke on my leaves if I were to use the monofilament method. For embellishment, because you're going to want to be stitching, there is some options for doing some stitching to put in your veins and your leaves. You could use some alternate colors of thread or you could do some hand stitching. So we have the awesome or floss. We have a selection of colors. We don't have the full range, but we have a nice selection of colors. Ooh, ah. And um, so these greens would be awesome for being able to embellish your leaves. And then if you wanted to do something with the flower centers, we'll have to have somebody on who can help us make some French knots. Ooh. So these would be great. So you could get a collection of yellows and greens to be able to embellish your flowers throughout the year. When you are doing your hand sewing, doing a embroidery needle would be great because it has that nice pointy, pointy um, tip. So I was talking with a customer who was sewing with or using the Aura Floss for embellishment. And she had been using the chenille needle and she was having a really tough time. It was easy to see and thread that needle, but it was really hard to sew because her needle wasn't 
pointy and sharp. Um, and then if you have trouble, a needle threader is always a great thing for being able to thread, especially if you're using floss. Or if it's late at night and you just need a little help threading your needle. All right. I've come at you with a lot of stuff. Are there any questions? I do have a question. Yes. Um, so chlorophyll cell, question one. So it has chlorophyll cell, how much saccharin shortage is usually due to the allergen? You know, I will post that in the comments. I believe I have that information. I just don't have it off the tip of my tongue. Sound good? Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I do have here the little mini iron, which sometimes people like for using for applique. And this is an, a great tool for doing very small things, especially if you're working right at a workstation. Um, if you're working for something bigger. So this is interesting because we do have some larger pieces. So I find that this actually works best when you have really, really intricate work that you're working with. I like having something and I don't sell it. I probably should be selling you something that I sell. But, you know, I like to have this compact mini iron. So these have a really cheapy ones. I shouldn't probably tell you this, that you get. Um, but having something like this is great for a project of this size. If you have your big iron, you know, that you might be using for pressing your backing or something like that, uh, that can be too large and then you burn, tend to have a tendency to burn your fingers. So I like that smaller size iron for tabletop projects like this. Okay. We have another question. So Sandy wants to know about the Aura Floss. So Sandy wants to know about the Aura Floss. So the Aura Floss is... A fancy, a comparison would be a DMC floss, okay? So I have, I don't have an open spool with me right now, but it is a six strand hand thread that's on this amazing wooden spool. So cool. And what you would do is that you pull off a length that would be, you know, like I go, you know, this much. So what's the, the, I'm not the lazy tailor, right? I, da, 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 you just do that much, and then you cut it, and then you separate it. Uh, if you, most of the, so however you would be doing an embroidery. So sometimes they call for a one strand or two strand or three strand. Very rarely do you use all six strands at once, and then you would use it in a variety of hand applications. So uh, DMC, DMC floss would be the 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 name potentially of a comparable product that you might be familiar with. The Aura Floss is amazing quality and it matches your thread perfectly. Okay, so you can have the same. So if you have the 50 weight thread of 2105, well, your Aura Floss would be exactly the same. Which then brings me to the other question of, and I didn't have this prepared, but I remember that I was requested uh, to offer that we would be able to special order uh, thread cards for you. I need to have that price, so I promise I'll have that by the next presentation. But if you were interested in getting an Orifel actual thread card, we would be able to special order it for you, whether you're in club or not. Um, make sure and that you could do that. I know that they're available from a variety of different outlets right now. And so if you were looking for one, yes, we can hook you up with it as well. Okay. Any other questions right now? No. Nope. Okay. So, um, Frank had shared with me, we have a few of these left, so they don't make these anymore. <gasps> they don't make them anymore. So we have them available, and they, um, I don't know, we maybe have 10 or something like that. So come in in-store if you had wanted to get a delicious box that has the availability to fit 12 and they're super great. We are super excited to be able to share all of these different 
flowers as we are going to be going through the year. So if you are tuning in to us for the first time, we show great stuff every single Thursday night. So make sure that you tune in. Next week will be our Free Spirit Club. And the Free Spirit Club, we will be showing you some really great stuff. Don't you like that? Really great stuff. Just join us every single Thursday night. For those of you watching us on Facebook, if you happen to do anything on YouTube, do us a favor and hop over to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our channel. Even if you prefer to watch us on Facebook, we are like a couple hundred away from a thousand subscribers. So I don't know, I've just wanted to be at a thousand subscribers. So come on and subscribe with us. All right, so before I let you go, I wanna show you a new line of fabric that just came in today. And it is nine to five five which i know some of you have been asking for from paper studios so frank let's look overhead so look at this so this is paintbrush studio this is liza flower and the really cool thing that i am excited about with paintbrush studios is that this is printed in the united states so that's super exciting this is a retro line it's a really sweet little collection and it is an office theme. So this is a time clock or time sheet. Old fashioned time sheet. Do you remember these? Huh. We we're talking about that today. And we have corded telephones. Oh, it's super cute. Look at that cord creating a flower. Oh, look at this. This is a clock. Remember these clocks that we'd have in our kitchens? So cool. We have typeface here. This is a telephone dial. Typewriter keyboard here. Is it in QWERTY order? Let's see. I don't know. Do 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 QWERTY right here. Da da da. Typewriter, <gasps> coffee cups, coffee, 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 coffee. Looking sharp. Five o'clock, just by type. Ambition, do the work. Tenacity, make your mark. Oh, I love this. That's cool. Pencils. This is um, the type from the buttons on a phone. Operator, D, E, F, A, B, C. Does it do this? Yeah, they still have those. That's how we text back in the day. Back in the day, that's <laughs> how we texted. That's how texting started. Nice background. And there are little paper clips in here. Really, really faint little paper clips. And then this one right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen gorgeous pieces. Tammy's yelling at me because I didn't put it on the website and I'm still showing you. I did not get the panel in. So if you were looking for the panel for this line, I'm so sorry we don't have it in. Um, but we have these gorgeous fabrics. I'd be more than happy to arrange her bundle for you uh, for your pleasure. So that's the new fabric that I have for you to show you preview today. We have lots of new stuff coming in, a ton, ton, ton of new stuff. So uh, make sure to check out our website and if you're shopping to check out in store. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you have any questions that we haven't been able to address, you can ask us afterwards and let us know if you were interested in any of those uh, light boxes, we'd be more than happy to special order them for you. Also, we do still have memberships available if you're looking to still join into our ORFL Club 2022. Thanks for joining us. Happy quilting, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>